The billionaire founders of Home Depot can't stop complaining about Bernie Sanders because week after week, he's proposing policies that will curtail the wealth and greed of these capitalist pigs. Now, I already talked about this segment where his uh, partner, Ken Langone, was on Fox News complaining about Bernie Sanders, but now in an interview with Neil Cavuto, the other Home Depot founder, Bernie Marcus, is going to complain about Bernie Sanders and explain how he can't even with Bernie Sanders. This is glorious. Take a look. Uh, don't bring up Bernie Sanders because oh, that's a red flag in front of me. Oh, because oh. He's the enemy of every entrepreneur that's ever going to be born in this country and has been born in the past. Well, he represents about half the candidate's views. on. Well, this. we don't have our kids today don't learn uh, Western civilization. They don't learn history. History repeats itself. You see things happening over and over again. Uh, if you, you became president, what would you guys do? Uh, me? Probably move to Australia. <laughs> you can't you take know, that aquarium. You know, you well, what could he do? I mean, he can't do anything to us. He's going to affect my grandchildren. Love him or hate him, I will say that the toupee that Bernie Marcus is rocking this time is much better than the toupee that he wore on Fox Business last time because that just looked like he had a bird's nest on his head and this time it actually looks like he has hair. So, you know, I'm glad that he finally purchased a wig that looks better, but um, still doesn't mean he's any smarter. <laughs> He probably felt self-conscious because a lot of people made fun of him um, when he went on Fox News because it looked like a dead fucking carcass on his head. But I digress. I'm getting way off topic. Basically, my favorite part is when he said that if Bernie Sanders became president, he would move to Australia. And my response? Bye. In fact, me, a peasant, I will offer to literally buy you the plane ticket if you agree to never come back again because we don't want you in this country we don't want you here you are greedy you are an oligarch and you think that you are better than everyone else because you have money but uh no that's not true you are not better than us peasants in fact i'd argue that you're worse than us peasants because you're a thief you have exploited the labor of home depot workers and that led to you becoming a billionaire you would not have been able to amass 5.9 billion in wealth had you not stolen that money from Home Depot's workers. So you're not better than anyone. Shut the fuck up. I mean, these sanctimonious pricks that I keep seeing on Fox Business, they are constantly getting on my nerves and they act like they can't even deal. He said, don't even bring up Bernie Sanders. He's the enemy of every entrepreneur that's ever going to be born in this country. No, he is not the enemy of every entrepreneur that's ever going to be born in this country. You are the enemy of people in this country because you're hoarding wealth, which is not good for the economy, and you keep encouraging these types of tax cuts. So you are lobbying the government to make you and your buddies richer and what happens? You're shifting the tax burden. This is what you're advocating for. You're advocating for a shift in the tax burden from you onto us. Because you don't want to pay taxes. You'd rather have us pay taxes. Well, fuck you. Like, I can't believe that these people have the nerve to go on national television and be so open about how greedy they are. Like, they have no shame whatsoever. He also says, our kids today don't learn Western civilization. They don't learn history. History repeats itself. Well, first of all, um, if history repeats itself, which it does, um, wouldn't you be worried about the fact that you are supporting a fascist? We see the rise of white supremacy. We see a proto-fascist in the White House in Donald Trump, and yet you're choosing to prioritize tax breaks over defeating the rise of fascism. I mean, if history repeats itself, then either you are ignorant to the history or you just don't care. And whenever a Republican uses the words Western civilization, that's usually a dog whistle for white civilization, right? They can't just come out and say, you know, we don't we don't ever learn about white culture and white history in America. We're so oppressed. Um, so what they use instead is Western civilization. Western civilization is disappearing because of immigration. Ooh, be afraid. I mean, it's a code word. So I don't, I don't know what he meant there. Maybe he's just stupid and he wasn't intending to be racist. I don't know. But I mean, I just expect the worst about these types of individuals. They're loathsome. They're disgusting. If you're a billionaire, like... By definition, you're a bad person because nobody can possibly spend that much money in one lifetime, let alone 10. So for you to have that much money and 
pretend as if you have any moral high ground whatsoever, especially over someone like Bernie Sanders. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's nervy. It's nervy, it's irritating, and I, I hate these types of people. He also said, um... What can Bernie do? He can't do anything to us. He's going to affect my grandchildren. Okay, so that's true. Bernie Sanders will affect your grandchildren in the sense that he's not going to allow them to inherit billions of dollars while doing nothing, while sitting on their asses. That wealth, when you croak, will be invested back into the community. But one way that he will really meaningfully affect your grandchildren, which is better for them, is he's actually offering them a future by fighting climate change because your grandchildren will not be able to live if our planet becomes uninhabitable so when they're older if bernie becomes president i'd reckon that they'd thank bernie sanders because guess what if you give them the choice between a habitable planet and lots and lots of wealth billions of dollars of wealth passed on from you um i'd i'd probably guess that they're gonna take the uh the planet because you can't spend money if you're dead you can't spend money on a planet that doesn't exist, in an economy that can't exist without a planet to sustain it. So these people are so one-dimensional, they're obtuse, they're stupid, and anytime I see them, like, I don't even get angry anymore. I mean, I, I guess I do get a little bit angry and a little bit butthurt, to be honest, but it's like, I don't feel as enraged when I see these elites attack Bernie Sanders as I used to, because that just tells me that Bernie Sanders is the real deal. He is truly going to implement structural change and he's not wavering he's not capitulating he's not telling elites behind closed doors that they don't have to worry about him because they're afraid they're vocalizing how afraid they are on national television they're broadcasting how they can't stand bernie sanders well if you don't like bernie sanders then he must be doing something right because um if elites hate him then that tells you he's with the people and that's what matters to me that's why i'm voting for bernie sanders you could support the humanist report at patreon.com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad